Good. Hey, uh, okay, so we're, we're, we've begun recording. Good morning, everybody. I'm Don Yoakum. This is Atomic Habits, and we are pleased to be able to bring you a gentleman that can help you in your business and also keep you out of a little bit of trouble. The, uh, you may know that uh, according to NAR, that at some point in their careers, roughly six out of 10 realtors will get behind in their taxes. And it is my belief that that's largely due to the fact that they don't do a monthly p &L and they don't do quarterly estimated deposits. And, you know, because we get paid on a 1099 basis, it's, it's easy and convenient to think that all that money is ours. But, you know, actually, the government has another opinion on that. And we, um, uh, we're going to hear about how we can keep that in order today. But the, the real reason why I'm so excited to bring you, David, today, who's the founder and CEO of uh, Streamline Business Solutions, a company that's been in business for over 15 years, serves over 700 uh, top producing agents throughout the country, including 50 teams that do over 3 million GCI a year. So what that has given him is a lot of data. And what he has done at some uh, cost and time is he's created a dashboard that enables him and his clients to be able to see what an appropriate expense is for a particular level of production on a line item basis. And so, you know, in when I owned all of my brokerages in the past, one of the things that that we did as a monthly discipline is uh, the company I was with had broken it, uh, us up into three different groups, launch, uh, growth, and achievement. And what I did is I took the, t uh, we had visibility to all the P&Ls across the country. So I took the top five brokerages in each of those categories, imported them into Excel. And then I looked at my offices on a light line of basis, according to the best of class, right? And then I'd say, oh my gosh, that guy's spending half of what we are on supplies. And I'd call him up, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> you know, hey, we went digital, you know? And so how could I do that, right? And so then you would learn how to then model after the best of class. So David's gonna talk about his service, uh, which I think is um, from what I've, um, understood so far, very reasonably priced, but I just want you to know there's a bigger motive here, okay? It's one thing to track your expenses and to be understanding your numbers, but it's another thing to be able to actually model after the best of class, okay? And that's really what I wanna enable for you guys, and that's why I'm connecting you to David for that purpose. So David, why don't you take it away and tell us about the services that you perform and how they might be valuable uh, to our team. Yes, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, allowing me to be here. I'm gonna share my screen here shortly and give you just a very basic overview of a financial statement, one that uh, many of you can relate to as well as interpret. And I wanna show you a couple basic ideas of the questions that a business owner should ask or could ask of a financial statement. And then what Don was saying a little bit earlier, um, if we can benchmark against best practices and have a great idea of what we individually could be doing differently in our own businesses, we have the opportunity to drive the bottom line, become more profitable. And what then we could do with that money is of course up to us, whether that be buying investment properties, so on and so forth. But the best part about managing financials in my world is being able to make the business decisions needed and to be able to have very basic break-even numbers in my company uh, or in your company so that we're focusing or that I can focus on very specific metrics in my business versus 
pulling up my bank statement every morning to determine whether I'm making money or not. So it's more of a system and a tool. It is the language of business. It's accounting. It's not always a sexy conversation, but it is most certainly important when, uh, when we're operating a business. Uh, one of the things I always like to get started with is understanding that we are all business owners on this, in this conversation. Yes, we might be a dentist or a doctor or selling real estate, but it all boils down to being a business owner. And the information that we get for being a business owner is going to be the financial statement. So excited to show you my screen here in a minute or so and, uh, and walk you through what the basics might look like. Fantastic. So um, while Eric is an enabling screen share, uh, David, maybe what you might talk to is kind of who your ideal client is and then the spectrum. You know, what would be an agent that would start to consider your services? How much GCI would they be doing in a year? And of course, I don't think there's any top end. If you've got 50 teams doing over 3 million, uh, in GCI, then you probably can handle that. But uh, just so that they understand that you're speaking to them or you speaking to them when they get to that point. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the best case scenario is, is really when the mindset shifts into, I'm going to be a business owner instead of a hobbyist and start tracking the financial information. Uh, that should be happening on day one of owning the business. When we start talking about my specific services, our clients usually start about 180,000 in top line GCI, and then it can go up to uh, pr pretty much as far as it can go. At some point in time, there, there's, a, there's a time when you would have maybe an in-house bookkeeper, but until that six, seven million dollar top line revenue range, it, it, it's a very easy process to have it in, as an outsourced uh, portion uh, team of your business. Perfect, great. And do we, um, have you attempted to screen share yet? Uh, let me go here. Perfect. All right. Thanks, Eric. Hey, well, folks, uh, again, thank you for the opportunity. What I'm going to show you here is, is a financial statement. I'm going to walk you through it pretty quickly because I have a lot to show you. Uh, but again, this is the conversation that many that all business owners are looking at every single month uh, in their business to to course correct and to modify and help understand financially how their business is doing. And what you're looking at here on the on the screen is called an income statement or a profit and loss statement. And you'll probably hear most often people ask, "What is the bottom line?" Right? And where they shoot directly to the bottom line because they want to know the profitability. Of, of the company. So this is that report that these people are talking about. And, and quite honestly, it's very simple to read. We read it from top to bottom, and there are three major sections of this financial report. Uh, first and foremost, we have bucket number one, I'll call, and we'll call this commission income or GCI in your world. Bucket number two is this cost of sale category. And this talks about agent splits, broker fees, uh, commission reductions, so on and so forth. And then the largest bucket of this financial statement here is bucket number three, and we call this operational expenses or OPEX. These are the costs that happen in your business regardless if you sell a property. So this is really good information to know when we start looking at the business. So uh, first and foremost, when you pick up a financial statement like this, I, I would love for your eyes to go to the top. And the top says January through December of 2015. I just picked the date. But what this means for you is I don't want you to pick up this financial statement and go, wow, we made $466,000 in February. Well, no, this isn't February's data. This is 12 months worth of information. So that's the first key indicator uh, whenever you pick up any financial statement. And with the three buckets that I talked about, we're just doing basic, simple second grade math. We're, we're taking bucket number two, which is your commissions paid out or your commissions uh, cost of goods sold. And we're taking section three, which is your operational expenses. And then we're, we're subtracting both of those buckets from our top line GCI numbers. And that ultimately will tell us whether the business is positive in the black making money or negative or red and the business is not making money. It is that simple. Now, 
the way we utilize this is we start to begin asking questions of the financial statement. Now, this can get very elongated. There's a lot of different subcategories per se. But for today, I'm doing a very collapsed conversation with the main categories that any business would take a look at. And as Don mentioned before, these are the, the categories that we can begin comparing best practices to with other agents in the industry. David, so real very quick. quickly here. Yeah, please. Can it, you've pulled up a calendar year. Is it possible to do a trailing 12 months? It is, absolutely. Yeah, that's okay. the beauty of, of having the data in any financial system like that is, is you can pick categories, you can break it down by month, uh, you can do comparables, so on and so forth. So the information that you can pull from this is, is astronomical. And again, it goes back to just asking questions of the business. Perfect. Now we can get into, you know, breaking down GCI between your listing team, your buyer side team, referrals, so on and so forth, commercial, residential. We can go into a lot of specifics based on your personal business, but the layout in the organization is, is all the same. Now, what you see here on the right hand side is this, what they call percentage of income. And there's uh, a lot of models out there uh, that will, will tell you kind of what the basics or the benchmarks are. So for instance, uh, I have 46% profitability in this company. So this team that took a million dollars in GCI took 46 pennies of every dollar to the household or $466,000. Now, what I love to show you is that if the information is not organized correctly, how skewed the data could be. So let me make one quick little entry here. You recall the financial statement said $466,000 as a net income number. And with that quick little entry that I just made, what do you notice? That the bottom line of this financial statement didn't change a penny. Well, that's fantastic. But what also happened with that change? I reduced the top line GCI number because I'm only paying attention to the dollar figure that hits my personal business's bank account. Now, some of you might be going, what does that mean? What happens here is that many agents, as they get into the business and as they grow their teams, we're not paying attention to the global or the company top line GCI. We're only paying attention to what the, the, the personal business is making. Now, this financial statement isn't wrong and it's not bad but it doesn't give you the full spectrum of what your splits are and other uh, costs associated with running your business like broker fees, so on and so forth. So the same bottom line number here now shows 63% profitability. So I like to point this out all the time because it's very important to make sure you're looking at the full picture of your business, not necessarily just the dollar that hits your bank account. I'll stop there and pause for just a quick minute to see if anybody has any questions. So are we to understand then that this professional is spending $259,000 roughly with their broker? Yes, in this example, yes. And of course that could be the agent split, so on and so forth, yeah. Yeah, we, we definitely need now, again, to have a this... chat, <laughs> chat with them. <laughs> oh, yeah, now, they, okay, now that's now this good. Is that's an example, valuable. right? Sure. Yeah, this is fictitious information. It's not of course. anybody in don't, particular. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. I, I have a quick yeah. question. Oh, um, yeah. So, uh, you know, I attended a seminar was really interesting and, and they really helped drive in the importance of numbers and watching your numbers. And this gentleman said, everybody should be on accrual basis. I know it's account sounds it's in, in face of, but all the accountants are saying you cash your small business. He says all public companies are accrual and that changes your numbers a lot and your taxes. I would love to hear your thoughts on that. As I know a few of us on this call heard that information and said we all have to be accrual. So I'm, I'm curious if you have any thoughts. Yeah, uh, I do. Yeah, absolutely. Great question. Uh, so first and foremost, the basis of accounting uh, in, in financial reporting such as this is follows the tax return of the company. 
uh, for 900 clients that we manage, 700 being in the real estate industry, I will tell you that 99% of them are on cash basis. That is not my opinion. That is the hundreds of CPAs that we work with across the country with our independent clients that run on a cash basis. Now, to further that conversation, when we run things on accrual, my responsibility as a bookkeeper is to think a little bit outside the box and not just run the financials based on what hits the bank account, but what should be. So for instance, uh, my team always works with the brokerage to verify the 1099 numbers. And so we personally uh, at Streamline Business Solutions do, a, I'll call it a cash accrual conversation where we're always paying attention to what the revenue should be and not taking for granted what hits the bank account. And so if I'm tying to those control totals or those 1099 numbers or the brokerage's numbers every month, then I kind of already am running on an accrual basis from a reporting perspective. Now, we also make an entry to verify uh, that at the end of the year, we run things cash for tax purposes. So it's kind of one or the other. The other side of accrual is, is the expense side of things. And quite honestly, it's extremely rare to have some type of large expense in this industry that would require some type of an accrual. Yeah, uh, that's right. The only right. time I see that happening is <clears throat> maybe prepaying an entire year's worth of rent or something. And, uh, but it's rare, it's very rare. So cash, yeah. cash basis would be my final answer. Yeah, good. So, the another question that we had in the chat was uh, if someone is maintaining their uh, expenses and revenue in QuickBooks, are you able to then pull from that? How how does that integration work with your firm? Uh, so my team specifically manages all of this for our clients. We we do not allow specific access because we're the ones that take on liability for the accuracy of the data. Uh, we, of course, present the information monthly to our clients in PDF format and are always happy to provide a backup copy of the financial file, which, by the way, is your property. It's not mine. Uh, so if we were to part as friends, you get the information back. But in regards to the reporting and the knowledge and the mechanisms that my team goes through every single month to, to input this data, uh, we manage it on our servers in-house. We don't allow our, our clients to manipulate data or move things around so in other words um that would lead me to believe that you're accessing you have transparency to the bank accounts and so forth that's correct yeah, yeah third okay. party access is what it's called uh, no access to pay bills see personal accounts it's all third party bird's eye view information uh, yeah. and we can do our own work behind the scenes yeah or make withdrawals i presume correct great yeah. So you guys, oh, yeah. we're going to be wrapping up here in a minute, and we probably have time for one, possibly two more questions. But I'm, while you're thinking of your question, I just want to make a statement. And one of the one of the things that I have done over the last twenty years, when I'm talking about running a real estate practice, is I've I've often surveyed my audience. And I will ask them, uh, how many of you do a monthly P&L? And what I have found is that there is a direct proportion to the size of the income in that room with the percentage of agents that do monthly P&Ls. Uh, of course, the higher the um, percentage, the higher the income. And when you go north of 250,000, most of those agents are doing PL. So if you're doing more than 250 GCI and you're not doing a monthly PL, uh, you really, really should be uh, because you're running something more like a business. Now, that being said, um, <clears throat> David, uh, let's talk about costs. Do you want to, do you uh, want to bring up a, your sheet on the screen or do you want to just speak to it? Sure. Uh, yeah, our basic services, which is month, monthly cradle to grave bookkeeping, uh, starts at two seventy five a month, and it, and it elevates from there based on the number of units that the team closes on an annual basis. 
Now, um, for clients that have rental properties as well or do coaching on the side, and that's all inclusive into the same uh, entity, then, of course, uh, fees kind of in increase incrementally from there. Uh, and those are all independent conversations. But anybody walking in the door uh, can anticipate a, a 275 uh, per month fixed fee uh, conversation. Um, but, John, before I go, I want to show everybody one more report, if you don't mind. I think it'll blow everybody. Sure. Mind. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So, folks, what I, what I was showing you on the screen was a very basic profit and loss from a benchmarking perspective. But I kind of played a little trick on you because I only showed you a portion of the business. And that's where we start talking about a direct versus indirect conversation, meaning a management report versus a tax report. And so if you look on this left-hand side, the only thing that I did or what I was showing you previously, that $466,000 number was the direct or above the line conversation of your business. What I didn't show you was all of the additional indirect or below the line expenses that business owners like us can take advantage of on the tax code. And by all means, I'm not saying to go out and do this, please consult with your tax professional, but I'm talking about paying your kids a salary to reduce your tax uh, income, in, uh, income. Uh, maybe you're coaching or maybe uh, who's going to Cancun right now? Um, you know, those business Average. trips that need <laughs> to be uh, heavy, right? So the business trip, the, the, the uh, annual meeting, as I call it, to Cancun, those expenses, although applicable for the business, might not be on his financial statement for how he really runs the business. Those are extracurricular expenses. So we put those in a different bucket on the financial statement so we can do one of two things. One, we can manage our business based off the true facts of, of the real estate team and then indirectly have a, a ledger of additional revenues or expenses that might be applicable for tax purposes. Like I said, coaching income, uh, paying your kids a salary as an expense, um, so on and so forth. So at the end of the day, the ability to, to not only have a management financial report, as well as a tax applicable report is really important to be able to manage both numbers. Yeah, and guys, if you had, didn't see it there, that adjusted gross income dropped by over 100,000 bucks. So this individual yep. would have then saved over $30,000 on their taxes. Uh, because of because of that one move, David, do you have time to show us your dashboard? You know the metrics based on all of this data. I don't, uh, not the time. It's just I don't have the access to it because they're doing updates. Uh, but I will here in about three weeks. So if I need to jump back on or shoot a short video for you, I'd be happy to do that. Okay. Yeah, I would definitely like that. As soon as you have that, would you reach back out to me? And, and we'll Absolutely. decide whether or not we should do it in a video or have you back on. But hey, this is fantastic. We, of course, were really vested in seeing our agents become, uh, well, first of all, financially secure, but second of all, uh, getting them into a place where they can actually uh, step off the real estate treadmill one day. And so it's super valuable to have this resource along our journey. Uh, so thank you for taking the time. Uh, would you put your contact information in the chat so that the folks that are interested in talking further uh, to your team about the services that they're able to get a hold of you? Great. And then Tom, how about, uh, what do we have coming up, buddy? Okay. Yeah, well, hey, David, thank you so much. This was extremely valuable. Well, and I'm excited. We've got Dialing for Dollars coming up here shortly at 9.45 a.m. Pacific. Remember, that's every day, uh, Tuesday through Friday now. Um, and then this Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific, we have the top four objections that people are getting in this current market right now and how to overcome those with uh with uh, Coach Russ, and uh, I'm sorry, Russ Collioff. So that's this Friday, 9 a.m. We'll send it out. Well, hey, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Don. Thanks, David. And we'll see you soon. Dial in for dollar. Yeah. Hey, you guys, uh, before you hang up, I just want to, uh, uh, last thing, we are doing a local event in Roseville on February 10th. 
We're going to have Derek Shank speaking. We're going to have three expert panels. Uh, so it'll be uh, Friday, February 10th, 1 to 4 p.m. is the educational component. Of course, it's broker agnostic, so you're willing to, you're able to bring your guests. And then 4 to 5, we'll do a little social hour. So hope to see you there. And uh, in the meanwhile, uh, go uh, sell some homes. Go Niners. <laughs>